Very good evening, church. We are very glad to be here with you on this Resurrection Sunday. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Once again, thank you for joining us. I, I know many of you came here from uh, both near and far. We're so glad that you could join us today. This is a day of celebration and rejoicing, and we're glad to share it with you this morning. Uh, I do want to give some, uh, some announcements and disclaimers before we get started. First and foremost, uh, I do want to remind everyone that to silence your phones if you haven't done so already. Also, uh, during Act 2, uh, we do want to give a parental advisory. During Act 2, there are going to be some graphic scenes, as many of you probably already know. Um, so we do want to give a parental advisory. Uh, this is going to be the scene after you see Lazarus raised from the dead. Uh, you do have the option to bring any small children or young children upstairs to our nursery if you choose to do so during these, you know, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit of tough scenes to handle uh, for the children. And our nursery is upstairs. Uh, and so, uh, other than that, we hope you enjoy this play and thank you again for coming tonight. God bless you. Yeah. months ago and now you're saying it's not available wait until I tell my pastor about this I will tell him to give you his rep oh he's good here morning. now pastor good, good morning, morning. Good pastor. Good morning. pastor Chris Hi, how are you good yes pastor good. we have issues coming up what issues this early in the day I have a letter of course I got a problem pastor my soul is is sick with the stomach flu and I don't know what to do. Oh my God, I remembered. I bought a Mountain Mike's pizza. <laughs> and they ate it. Oh my God, what am I going to do, Pastor? Help me out. Uh, that's a tough place to be in, sister. The lamb that we ordered for that play, we can't have it now. They gave it to another church. Pastor, we ordered this a couple months ago. I know it's chaotic. I know we have so many things going on, but listen, let's just trust the Lord despite what's going on. Remember why we do this every year. We do this to present the gospel so that those that need to come and know Jesus will receive Him as Savior. So the Lord will help us despite what we're going through this morning. Lord, please help us. <laughs> With my retirement coming up in a couple of weeks, I want to introduce to you the new senior pastor of this church, Pastor Lenny. Hi, guys. Pastor Lenny, good, good morning. morning. Pastor Lenny. Sister Kim, your admin, if you need any help, please feel free to reach out to me. Of course, only during working hours. Noted. Okay. Sister Cecilia. Sister Lucille. Great. Well, now that we got that out of the way, um, I need you to do me a favor, ladies. I want you to go to the kitchen. Sister Rose made some delicious pandisal. You will take care of this, right? I will take care of it. I promise. Sure. I will. Trust God. <laughs> no, seriously, trust the Lord, okay? <laughs> what well, 35 years of ministry will do to it. I'm sorry. <laughs> How do you feel on your first day on the job? Well, well, Pastor, today's a really big day for me. You know, I'm not sure if I can do this. Uh, the service is in about two hours, so why are you telling me this now? No, 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 no. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, I've been preparing for this message for the past three weeks now, and I've been praying to God, continuously asking Him for guidance. It's just that I just don't know if I'm the right man for the job. You know, why did Jesus choose me to, to do this? Remember, my friend, when God chooses, it's all about him. I know you have a lot of imperfections, and so do I. It's not about us, it's always about him. Remember the people that God used in the Old Testament? Our favorite heroes in the faith, like Moses, Abraham, Esther, David. All of them had their own issues and problems, but all of them had one thing in common. They said, 
here I am, send me. And when they did that, the Lord did amazing things through their lives.
through these mighty men and women of old. They all had one message in common, that is they were looking forward to the day when the Messiah, the chosen one, the hope of the world, and we know him as Jesus, that Jesus would one day come and set all of mankind free from the bondage of sin. Thanks, Pastor. You know, I often forget that it's not about us, it's about him and his purpose for our lives. These great men and women of God who were sent to declare that the Messiah would come. And finally, that day came. Heaven itself came down to earth. God incarnate, Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
great teacher. Nicodemus, my friend. Shalom. Shalom. I'm sorry to have to disturb you this late in the night. May I speak with you? Yes, of course. What is your I know that you are one that is sent by, by God. For no one can do all the things that you have done or say the things that you have said unless they came from God Himself. I'll tell you the truth. That no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Born again? Did He say born again? Uh -huh. How can this be? How can a man like myself in my age, enter my mother's womb a second time. You must be reborn, not of the flesh, but of the water and of the spirit. <sighs> rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi. Being born of the water and of the spirit, I, I don't understand that. I know. Look at this way. It's like the wind. Can you hear it sound? Yeah. Do you know it? where it's coming from? Same way when the spirit comes, it causes that life to be reborn. So in order to be reborn, what you're saying, great rabbi, is that one must receive the spirit. So how do I then receive the spirit to be born again? By believing in me, whom God has sent. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent His Son to this world, not to condemn, but to save. So that means I'm far away from the kingdom of God. All the good works that I do are like filthy rags before Him then. So it's not enough to keep the commandments. Is this Jesus the one I've been looking for in my whole life? Sharing this newfound conviction. 
hurts us so bad, but all we can do right now is to trust God. Trust? Trust, Mary? It's a little too late for that. calling in my life. You know, uh, I gave my life to Jesus 10 years ago, and what a joy it was. But before that, 
you know, I, I, I was considered the black sheep of my family. You know, with my, they looked, I was, I was looked down upon, and with my problems with alcohol and failed marriage, you know, how am I supposed to lead them to Jesus when they see me as I am? Remember, the black sheep that you were talking about, when Jesus came into your life, he changed you. So he's washed you white as snow, my friend. And remember, change comes slow but surely, but I know the Lord has done an amazing work in your life. That you have a testimony to share, not just to the world, but more importantly, your family. I know it's going to take time for them to realize this. But in due time, just as the Lord has saved you, He's going to save them. In all in His due time. Thanks, Pastor. You know, uh, in your experience, uh, what, what keeps you going? What keeps me going? Good question. Well, I'm not going to lie to you and say I've had, I haven't had my share of heartaches and pains, trials left and right. Well, for many years, my, my wife and I struggled to have kids. But the time came when the Lord blessed us with our firstborn son, Isaac. Boy, we were so happy as parents. The, the dreams and the aspirations and the goals we had for our son. Ultimately, to cut it short, when we found out that when he was 12 years old, he was diagnosed with leukemia. And unfortunately, my son went home ahead of us. You know, Lenny, I questioned God for so long. I wanted to quit. I wanted to stop following God for some reason. But yet, His Word kept reminding me time and time again of His faithfulness. Remember what He said to His disciples before going to the cross? He said, in this world you will have many troubles, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Amen. So, God was still faithful, and despite what had happened to us years later, the Lord bless us with two more children, Naomi and Ruth, who are now serving the Lord and, and they have their own families, and I'm a grandfather. The reason why I'm telling you this is because no matter what we go through in life, just remember the Lord is faithful. What makes this time of the year so special with Jesus rising from the dead is that we have a living hope that is found in Him despite all the problems of this yeah. life. So my friend, continue to show the love of God to your family. Let the risen Christ be with you. Just before the Passover was about to take place, Jesus and his disciples made their way to an upper room near the city of Jerusalem. Jesus knew that his time on earth had come to a close. He would share one last meal with his disciples, with what we call as the Last Supper. Jesus told his disciples to always remember him as they partook both of the bread and the wine. Jesus also told his disciples that he was the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one would go to the Father except through him. The time of suffering had come to an end. Before the glory of an empty tomb would come, first the agony and suffering of the cross. This is my body, broken for you. Eat it. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat this.
Peter, James, John, come pray with me. My soul is craving to the point of death. Pray, pray, lest you fall into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Pray, pray with me.
still sleeping. Get up. Get up. Can you stay awake and pray with me for one hour? Arise. For the Son of Man is to be betrayed in the hand of the sinner. My betrayer is here. Where? Where are you taking us? Where is this man? Judas. What are you doing? Stop wasting my time! Do what you come to do here, friend. You betray the Son of Man with a kiss. Who are you looking for? We're here! You see Jesus of Nazareth! I am here. Guard! Take him! Go! Peter, stop! Right in here! Must I not take the cup that I've given to me? I could call on my father. And he will at once send to a legion of angels and my command. But if I do that, the scripture will not come true. You. What happened? How did that happen? Every day I was at the temple, you did not come to arrest me. Now you come with swords and gloves like I was a thief. The hour is now. The power of darkness reign. It all must come to pass. Lord, take him away! Let's go! Let's go! 
Man for yourself.
Are you okay? Does this question come from you? Or I don't have told you about me. Am I a Jew? It was your own people. You chief priest who handed you over to me. What have you done? Are you a king? My kingdom is not from this world. If it were. The angels will come for my own and fight for my rest. But no, my kingdom is from another place. Aha! So you are a king then? You say that I am a king. I was born into this world to bear witness to the, to the truth. And those who love the truth listen to me. And what is true? Caiaphas! I find nothing wrong with this man that merits crucifixion. I will have him severely scourged, but then released. Your Honor, if you release this man, he will be a threat to Rome and to Caesar. What would Caesar have to say about this? My beloved husband, Pilate, don't have anything to do with that man. For I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. I will let the people decide. People of Judea! It is my custom each year to release to you a prisoner, sentenced to death, in honor of your Passover. Today, we give you a choice. We have Ramos, a wanted criminal, an insurrectionist, or this Jesus of Nazareth, of whom I find no fault. Which of the two would you have me release? Give us one! What? A wanted partner? And this Jesus?
the best part, man. <laughs> All right. Bring him in. Where is he? Bring him in. <laughs> know what to do? Do your job! Is he a king? This guy walks crazy. He's no king! Look at him!
Centurion! Centurion, wait! My name is Joseph of Arimathea, a former member of the Sanhedrin. But now I follow this man. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I have asked Pilate for permission for his body. Please, so that I may honor him with a proper burial. Yes, you may. No! Finish him off.
centurion. Is the Nazarene dead? Yes, prefect. Hmm. This was no ordinary man. I've never seen a death so wistful. As if he wanted to be sacrificed. Sir, your honor. Humbly, I come to make another request from you. I've done what you asked for. You wanted him crucified. The man is dead, Caiaphas. What more do you possibly want with this Nazareth? While that December was still alive, he told his followers that up to three days, he would rise again from his own death. Ah, Caiaphas! Have you seen a Roman crucifixion? That doesn't allow for that high priest. Yes, but if his tomb is left unguarded, his followers will certainly his stole his body and tell the people that he has risen from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Well, Centurion, Take a small guard, a small guard mind of soldiers, and secure the Nazareth too. Oh, Kairos! I never want to hear of this Jesus of Nazareth again.
Come here. Come here. Come here. What are you doing there? Come on. I don't see his body. I don't see his body. Come, 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 come. Come here. What are you doing? Come on. What are you doing? You know what? There's nobody, but I see this instead. Where's the body? The, the tomb is empty. Meru, the tomb is empty. The no. tomb is empty. There's no body. No. Jesus, where is he? There's no body. I don't know. Where is he? The, the tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. <laughs>
For I have been given the power over heaven and earth. Go now to all nations, make them my disciples. tonight is how do we process the events of the greatest story ever told? The crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection from the dead. And what, what do they mean to us? What Jesus said in John chapter 14, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house are many mansions or dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again so that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus was talking about heaven. The Bible in Revelation 21 gave us a glimpse of what heaven is like, how beautiful and perfect heaven is. The Bible says, He shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. There's no more death. There's no more pain. There's no more sorrows. It's joy forevermore in the presence of the Lord. And then the Bible gave us uh, some details of the beauty of the place. The Bible says that the roads in heaven are paved with gold. The walls are decorated with jasper and onyx and diamonds and all kinds of beautiful and expensive precious metals. But there's one thing that caught my attention in Revelation 21, 21. It says that the gates of heaven are made of pearls. And when I was dwelling on the thought, and I was literally talking to the Lord, this was a few years ago. I said, Lord, why, why is it that the roads are paved with gold while the gates are made of pearls? And the Lord showed me something, and I'm not claiming it to be a revelation from the Lord. But can I tell you for a few minutes how a pearl is made? A pearl is made when a grain of sand gets into an oyster. That grain of sand irritates the oyster to the point that the oyster would, would, would secrete some kind of a mucus-like substance to wrap the grain of sand. And eventually, over the course of time, that grain of sand with that mucus membrane that envelops it becomes a pearl. So ladies, those of you who enjoy your pearl necklaces, I would like to remind you that someone suffered 
that thing that you're enjoying now. An oyster suffered for it. And then I went back to Revelation 21, 21, where it says the gates are made of pearls. And it dawned on me that heaven is open for the believers because someone suffered for it. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Amen. He was willing to suffer a horrible pain on the cross and eventually die so that you and I can gain entrance to heaven. Amen. We're going to enjoy the place one day. Some of our friends have been there ahead of us. But if you are a believer tonight, which means you have given your heart to Jesus, you are going to enjoy heaven because someone suffered so that the gates, the pearly gates of heaven will be open for you. So how do we respond to this wonderful play that have been practiced over months? And by the way, thank you guys. It was a wonderful play. Could you imagine, could you imagine being there 2,000 years ago? What would have been your response? And that's what we're gonna do tonight. I'm gonna ask you to stand up for a few minutes. If you have not given your life to Jesus, maybe this, this is the best time to do it. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to be good. You might say tonight, Pastor, I'm not worthy of heaven. Well, I have good news for you. You don't have to be worthy of it. Jesus died to pay for the penalty of your sin so that you could be made worthy of heaven. You don't have to do anything. The light is not on you right now, but I'd like you to close your eyes and bow your hands. And if you would like to go to heaven one day, and it's not for everyone, it's only for those who will humble themselves and say, I need my Savior to come into my life so that I can enjoy the beauty of heaven to be with Jesus forever. As we bow down our heads and as we close our eyes, if you need Jesus in your life, raise your hands and we will pray together tonight. The Lord knows you. The Lord sees your hands. I don't see you. The light is not on you tonight. But don't say, I'll think about it tomorrow. I'll think about it next week. Tomorrow is not yours. Next week is not yours. Today is what God is giving you the time to make the decision. Follow me in a simple prayer. This is a prayer that you just have to pray from the bottom of your heart. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ come into my life tonight. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. And thank you for the forgiveness of my sins. Thank you for opening up heaven for me. So that one day I could be with you forever. Thank you Lord Jesus for that salvation. This is my prayer. In Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord, you may be seated. Ah, uh, we're going to miss Pastor Chris. What a man of faith he was. He not only loved Jesus, but he showed others by loving them. Thank you, Pastor Lenny, for officiating his funeral services. He would have loved it. Yes, I myself miss Pastor Chris so much. You know, I'll never forget what he taught me that despite the trials in life, despite the struggles that we all face, that when God calls us, it is worth answering that call. You know, Pastor Chris answered that call many years ago in his life, and now he's with our precious Savior in heaven, enjoying enjoy the glories of heaven. Not all of you have experienced and have seen the gospel. Will you today come to Jesus? Because if you do, heaven is waiting for you. For like Pastor said, there will be a day where there will be no more pain, no more sickness, and the sufferings of this life will come to an end, and we will be with Jesus forevermore.
and mercy fills the street to look upon the one who planned to save me and walk with him for all eternity. Oh